Hello and welcome to your online class, my dear students. So last class, in this chapter, that is rotation and revolution, we discussed about rotation and its effect. So in this class, we will be discussing about revolution and the effect that revolution has. So first to define a revolution, we can define it as the movement of the earth around the sun in its fixed path and the path is known as orbit. It takes some 365 one fourth days to make up one revolution. So that is one whole year. During its course of movement, the earth happens to be positioned at a different place. And during these movement, the earth happens to experience various effects. First is uh, the length of day and night. If we talk about uh, the length of day and night, it is not equal throughout the year. At times, the day seems to be longer than as compared to night, while in some times of the year, we find the night much longer than the day. So this unequal length of day and night is caused because of the revolution of the earth. It is not just the revolution of the earth that determines the length of the day and night, but also very importantly the alignment of the axis of the earth. As we discussed earlier in the class, that the axis of the earth is inclined at an angle of 66 and half degree to its orbital plane and 23 and half degree to its vertical plane. Now this inclination of the Earth's axis is on the same direction throughout the revolutionary time. So that means you can say the axis maintains the parallel or you can say parallelism throughout the entire movement that takes place in a year. So this is the reason why the length of day and night is not the same everywhere. So this unequal length of day and night can be very easily or very well understood with the help of the following topics as also one of the effect of the revolution of the earth. We see like we experience uh, four different seasons in general, that is winter, summer, spring and autumn. And if we happen to see the time interval between each of these seasons, then we see summer comes after spring, almost after three months. And then again, after three months of summer, it is the autumn, then followed uh, by winter after three months of autumn. And then again, back to spring after winter. Each of these seasons has their own characteristic. So let's first discuss about uh, the spring and autumn as because they share a very similar characteristic. Spring in the north is autumn for the south. So in the north, spring is experienced in, on 21st of March. Well, on the same date, that means on 21st of March, it is autumn for Southern Hemisphere. Similarly, autumn, I mean like when it is autumn in the North, that is Northern Hemisphere, the very time it is the spring in the Southern Hemisphere. So the dates of spring season and autumn season, in fact, uh, the specific date to discuss 
in these two seasons is 21st of March and 23rd of September. In consideration to the Northern Hemisphere, 21st of March is considered to be spring equinox while 23rd of September is considered to be autumnal equinox which is exactly opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. The reason why we call these two days as equinox, that is 21st of March and 23rd of September as equinoxes, is because on these days, the length of the day and night remains to be equal. That means 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. And that is why it is known as equinox. It so happens because the sun during these times is positioned at is positioned right over the equator that is zero degree hence there is an equal amount of light being transmitted in the northern hemisphere as well as in the southern hemisphere while on 21st of june and 22nd of december two of different dates and different seasons to discuss so let's first discuss about june Usually, June, July and August is considered to be summer season. So, on 21st of June, it is considered to be the longest day and shortest night in the Northern Hemisphere and shortest day and longest night in Southern Hemisphere. So, the season is also the opposite. In the Northern Hemisphere, while it is summer season, in the Southern Hemisphere, this is when is the winter season experienced. So this term or uh, to this the unequal length of day and night is what we call solstice. Solstice it is the overhead position of the sun at the tropic. At this point of time on 21st of June the sun is over at the tropic of Cancer and this is where maximum heat energy is received by the northern hemisphere and this is the time of summer season and hence uh, since because we receive a larger amount of rays of the sun so hence the length of the day is also more while 22nd of december is considered to be winter solstice or winter season in a southern uh, sorry northern hemisphere while the same month is considered to be summer season in southern hemisphere so this is also one of the reason where we should not forget that uh, Christmas in Australia is celebrated during the summer season as because December for Australia falls as summer months. So on 22nd of December the length of night is considered to be the longest of the year than as compared to day in the northern hemisphere. Well in southern hemisphere it is just the opposite. The day is the longest and the night is shortest. So this phenomenon that occurs because of seasonal changes or because of the revolution of the earth is known as solstice. So apart from this, when we discuss about uh, the revolution, we cannot forget about leap year. Leap year is a year comprising of 29 days in the month of February. This additional day is added every fourth year making a year with 366 days this so happens because the exact time of revolution is considered to be uh, 365 days 5 hours and 45 minutes hence this 5 hours 45 minutes when calculated in 4 years of time it's considered to be almost 24 hours and hence Hence, it gives us a time of one day. So this one additional day is added to the month of February, making it a day, month of 29 days and a total of 366 days in a year. The last but not the least, when the sun being at the center and the earth moving around it, the distance between the sun and the earth is not the same because of the shape of the earth's orbit that is the path around which the earth moves around, around the sun. So this orbit is elliptical in shape 
because of its elliptical in shape the distance between the sun and the earth is not the same on july 4th the sun and the earth has the maximum distance with almost 152 crores millions like you can say 15.2 crores and on 3rd of january it is the minimum distance between the sun and the earth and the distance is almost 147 or 14.7 kilo crore kilometer on an average it's 15 crore kilometer so the time when the sun and the earth has the maximum distance is described as aphelion while to that where the distance between the sun and the earth is minimum is called the perihelion so this is about the chapter class thank you and you all have a good time